everybody how are you good evening yes i've been very busy today yes i've been doing react after react some of them are current reacts sometimes some of them are the retro reacts but i have been busy and we got another one because of course it just would not be a complete day unless chantal posted a mukbang would it yeah she did that she posted a sub mukbang she ate not one, but two sub sandwiches. And not only did she eat, now we are at the stage where she's blame shifting. Her problem with food is somebody else's fault. It can't possibly be her fault. No, 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 no. It's 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 something to do with somebody else. Th that's where we're at right now. Not taking any accountability, no self-awareness, just blaming the issues on other people who aren't even present in her life right now. Well, I've got some stuff to show you on Twitter. And I also want to go over some comments in her comments section because a lot of people are really giving it to her on this video. They're really making their thoughts known. And I got thoughts about that. So let's start with Twitter. Let's get that done. Hold on. All right. For those who want to join me on Twitter, it's Wild Girl Sarah. Let's start here with Reality Check. Reality Check says, in the words of Dr. Now, do you look like you're starving? No, nope, she doesn't look like she's starving. I mean, two sandwiches, a big old bag of chips, a whole vase full of juice. I don't think she's starving. Uh, Miss Anthropope uh, saying, two subs, two bags of chips, and a vase full of pomegranate flavored sugar water with dangerously high blood sugar levels. Hmm. Isn't it interesting that we haven't got any blood glucose readings lately? All that candy that was brought home, no readings on her blood sugar yet. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting that after all of that junk food was brought home, she's not offering up her blood sugar readings to, to people. Uh, Katie says the Jews for Salah and his friends. Well, <laughs> In foodie's world, we know how that goes. She'll say she's buying something for somebody, but then later on it becomes hers. So I guess that juice isn't his anymore or it never was. So if that's the case with the juice, foodie, what about the candy? Where's the candy? Is it gone already? Hmm. I bet it is. Uh Hidden Truth says, Foodie Beauty, YouTube is partially responsible for this behavior by allowing and monetizing such dangerous vlogs and misinformation. It violates their terms of service, but they seem indifferent, just like Chantal, who disregards the quality of her own life. Well, Chantal has gone on record as saying that if she did not make money off her content, she wouldn't be doing it. So if YouTube stepped up to the plate, and they actually reinforce the policies that they are insisting everybody else follow, if they had her follow it, maybe this kind of behavior wouldn't be happening. You know, are you listening YouTube? Are you listening? Maybe you could squash some of this if you care. If not, then you'll let it continue. Uh, Judge Judy says, foodie beauty. No, you ain't saying you're afraid of starving. The way you eat, you're never going to be close to starving. Yeah, so somebody in the comments was giving her all kinds of advice about portion sizes and all that. Foodie's answer is, I'm afraid of starving. It's a weird fear. Thanks for sharing. So where exactly is this fear of starving? Where did that come from? Because in all the story times that you've told us over the years about your family and your upbringing, Never did you relate that there was a lack of food in the house or you were deprived of food. So where is this fear of starving coming from? And since you eat two hours, you know, every two hours, how could you possibly starve? Starving would imply you're going long periods without food to the point where you are losing strength. You're nowhere near close to starving food eating, so don't worry about it. Uh, this is also from Katie, and this is from Chantal, and I quote, because it turns out having any kind of health issues doesn't seem to be enough sometimes to keep me from eating bad things, and I need to get on medication 
like everyone was saying, but, well, she could take medication, but she needs more than medication. She needs a variety of things that she is not willing to do to make the situation better. You can take all the pills you want, but if you're not having the proper diet, proper nutrition, if you're not controlling your portions, what good can that medication do you? It can only do so much. Uh, Katie also says, how's that juice that you're definitely not going to be drinking? Did you finish your meal with candy that you're definitely not going to be eating? <laughs> you know, it's her life or her death. She's with every meal she decides between life or death. And right now she's leaning in the direction of death. She's practically blowing in his ear and saying, call me. I'll be right here by the phone waiting. She's moving away from life and moving closer to death. And that's entirely her decision. Nobody can stop her. Uh, Holly Go Heavy says, foodie beauty. Yes, it's that black and white. Diabetes doesn't care about your mental health or eating problems. It is black and white. So Crazy Kid says, you don't care enough about yourself to want to live. Sad. Even with medications, you still have to highly monitor what you're eating in order to control your sugars. Foodie says, um, no, it's not as black and white as that. Prod says, Foodie, yes, it is, but keep finding excuses for yourself. Yeah. If there's something in life you want to do, some goal that you have, a dream that you have, where there is a will, there is a way. You won't look at things and say, oh, there's too many obstacles. I can't do it. You'll find a way to get over the hurdles and get on the other side. Fodi does not want to heal herself. She doesn't want to be healthy. She wants to stay sick. I know that's a weird concept. Y'all are out there saying, why would anybody want to stay sick? Sick is not a healthy place to be. It doesn't feel good. But trust me, that's where she's at. That's where she wants to be. That's her little happy, unhappy place. Because she monetizes all of her hurts. Because she's in pain, because she's suffering, she's got something to talk about. If she's in pain and she's suffering, then if she talks about it on her channel, she's got a whole audience of people that are concerned for her. She wants to be the center of attention. And if she were healthy, if she were somewhat normal and she was okay, people wouldn't worry over her so much and maybe she might not get the same kind of attention. So she creates an atmosphere on her channel of, I want all of you to worry over me. I want you to worry over my life. And if something medically might happen to me, I'm not going to let you relax. If you're a sub of mine, you're going to constantly worry and be stressed out. And I'm going to give you just high stress headaches. That's just how it is on the foodie beauty channel. There's no atmosphere of fun and chillaxing and all that. It's about going on her channel and you wonder like what's going to happen next and that's exactly the way she wants it and that's how she's going to keep it okay so that's it for everything on twitter so let's get out of here let's get out of here and let's go over to directly to her video before we could dive into that with her blame shifting i want to show the comments before miss thing over here deletes them because i know she will She's all about going on her comments and, and deleting the things that she doesn't like. Or maybe she won't because she needs the engagement right now. Uh, Koali says, if you're so happy with Salah in Kuwait, why do you need to eat like this for comfort? Clearly, you aren't happy and you aren't fooling anyone. You need to go back to Canada where your in, in, inevitable hospitalization won't cost a fortune. Well, that's the question that I've been asking. She swears that her life is so much better in Kuwait. She's got a partner now. She's got a husband. So if you're so happy, why are you eating like you're so miserable, foodie? I mean, make it make sense. Your words say one thing, your actions say another. The two of them are clashing. It doesn't, it's, you know, the math ain't mathing. Uh, TM6 says, are you secretly waiting for a medical emergency to happen not to be rude, but I don't think it's a secret. I think she might be waiting. I'm not wishing that upon her by saying that. But she's not doing anything to stop it either, is she? Every time she sits down to eat a meal, it's 
Like she's saying without saying, I don't care. I give up on life and I'm running towards death. I give up. I surrender. I could do things to help myself. I could do things to prolong my life. But life does not truly interest me. I'm waiting for something to happen. And it's her choice. What can we do? Uh, Raya M says, serious question. Why don't you fly to Jordan or Lebanon and get bariatric surgery? It's very inexpensive. You clearly need help. I can answer that question. I can answer that. Listen, Foodie is 550 pounds. She has a lot of health problems. She has her diabetes. Uh, because of her diabetes, any kind of open wound is very slow to heal. Worse, she's got very bad hygiene. So if she had bariatric surgery, there'd be an open wound. She's not about keeping things clean. It could possibly get infected. But beyond that, she's got a severe fatty liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, all right? Enlarged heart. She's had blood clots in her lungs. I think it would be a tremendous risk to put her on the table. She may not make it off. But even if that weren't the case, even if those things were not present, she's got an issue with food. All that surgery like that can do is reduce the size of your stomach, but it cannot fix an addiction. The addiction's up here. It's right there. Stomach's down here. Okay, if the addiction were down here, maybe that might be the case, but her issue with food is up here. She's got some kind of issues wrapped around food and she needs to get that worked out through therapy and inpatient and outpatient and stuff. But let's just, let's just paint the picture. Let's just say Foodie did get the surgery. Okay, she made it off the table. Now she's got a smaller stomach because that bee monster in her head has not been dealt with at all. She has no coping mechanisms, no coping skills. Do you know what would happen? She would want to overeat. She'd want to have those bee moments. And one of two things would most possibly happen. She would rupture her stomach and cause a life-threatening situation to happen. Or she would make herself vomit over and over and over again because her stomach is just simply too small to take the amount of food that she wants to shove down in there. The bee monster in her head would say, keep eating, keep eating, keep eating. But the stomach would go, hey, we can't do that anymore. That's the reason why doctors do not do that kind of surgery on people who have food issues. Usually when you do that kind of surgery, you get that kind of surgery, they want to know that you are on the right path, that you've been there a while, and that when they give you the surgery, it will be successful and stay successful and you can be happy and healthy with it. I have talked to people that have the surgery. I was told that leading up to the surgery they want to see weight loss uh, i think it's like two weeks of a liquid diet there's a lot of hurdles you have to cross before they give you the surgery so foodie's problem it goes way beyond the size of her stomach she's got to deal with the issues in her head she's got to cage that bee, bee monster for life she's got to and no surgery is going to fix that. None. Absolutely none. So I understand where you were going with that, T. But that's not going to fix it. It's just not. No, you, you, you've got to get to the heart of the matter, the root of the problem, and pull it out before the problem is solved. Uh, just Wow says, Salah should leave you if you don't get your crap together and take care of yourself. He must not give two craps about you. How are those Reese's cups? Did you eat them all yet? More than likely. And it goes without saying, Salah doesn't care about her. He cares about the money. Who in their right mind would be in that situation where they are? And you watch somebody make themselves more and more sick and lose their mobility. And yet you stick around and you help the situation get actually worse. He's the one bringing her the doggone food. He could stop. 
he could say, you know what? This is getting really heavy. I don't want any more of this and leave. He could just hightail it out of there and be done. But he's stupid and he's selfish and he's there for a paycheck. And he's not thinking about the consequences of not only his actions, but hers. Like, what if he comes home and she's comatose on the floor? How are you going to deal with that, Salah? You ever think about that, you big idiot? Yeah, the way she's pushing herself, it might happen. I'm not saying I want it to happen, but it might happen. Uh, Sandalwood says, how is this going to end? If carbs and sugar can't be limited and you have diabetes, how does this end? Because the equation isn't looking good. Sugars, bread, teriyaki sauce, sugars, juice, sugars, barbecue chips, and diabetes equals not a good time for you. You have no choice. You have to course correct. If you have to go into inpatient and be policed till your taste buds think so, be it. You're in a desperate situation. People lose limbs over this. I'm going to say it again. And some of you VIBs, you may not like me for saying this. I really don't care. The truth is the truth. Deal with it. Hear it or not. Chantal is doing this on purpose. She's a master manipulator. I know you guys like her over there. Feel free to like her, but understand what you like. Okay. Understand the nature of the beast. If you're going to like the beast understand what's going on here she did a cuba rage where she said that she will manipulate the f out of all of you and then turn around and be sweet as pie and you guys will eat it up she wasn't kidding when she said that she was dead ass serious so this atmosphere that she's creating on her channel doing it on purpose she wants all of you to worry for her she wants all of you to be concerned she wants that to be the reason why you tune in and watch her stuff. It's not about entertainment. It's about having a bunch of people worry over her. She wants you to worry over her. And as long as you're worried over her, you will tune in. You'll give her the engagement. You'll leave the comments. You might give her a super chat if she does a live. You'll give her a view. That's all she cares about, keeping those views up. It's not about her health. Her health is really bad. She doesn't want to heal herself. Like I said, she wants to continue being the walking wounded to complain about her problems and not solve them. Y'all need to wake up over there and realize that, that she is manipulating you using what's wrong with her. Maybe one day you might wake up, maybe not. One day you'll see the light, I think. Okay. This comment, dude, really, Ponder Pain says, I was about to be disappointed you weren't going to eat that second sandwich. I don't know if this person is being sarcastic. They might have been. They might have been. They might have been. I, I really hope you're being sarcastic. <laughs> it's not a feeder making that comment. I hope you're being sarcastic. I hope you weren't being serious. Uh, Deb says, we all struggle with our demons, Chantal. The thing is, she's not struggling. She's not fighting against it. This is not a game of tug or war. She is, she's running towards her, her issues. And she's feeding her issues. And she's feeding all her addictions. There's no fight here. She's not fighting. Uh, Marcy says, Chantal, this has to stop, please. I'm honestly feeling so anxious for you. Ta-da! You're a viewer and you're feeling anxious for her, but what is she doing about her health? Does she really give a crap? No. She's got a doctor's appointment, allegedly. What is she doing before the doctor's appointment? She's buying candy. She's buying juice. She's consuming all that sugar. Now here she is eating two subs. Really? That's somebody who cares about their health? Does this look like a situation where if you're sub to her, that... Your, your anxiousness is going to go down. No, it's only going to increase. That's what's up. It's only going to get worse. Yeah, people in the comments saying two sandwiches and, and chips, really? 
Uh, Kelly out and about says, Chantal, I'm so sorry you cannot control your eating. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. She could control her eating. She just doesn't want to. She's got BED, but so did I. Okay? For six years, I did. And this is not about me. But don't let her fool you. If you have BED, you can control your eating. You can reverse that B monster. Yes, you can. Lots of people have done it. Why can't she do it? She can't do it because she doesn't want to. Don't let her put that garbage in your face and tell you it can't be controlled. She has no control. She could learn it if she wants to. Don't let her come at you and say, oh, I can't control myself. It's beyond my control. No, it's not. You don't want to control it because if you did, you wouldn't be able to make money on YouTube like you have been. You're letting it run amok for a reason. Uh, Tangled Misty says, I see now why Salah won't appear in videos with her anymore. Yep. He's been like out of the picture. You have to wonder why. Why won't he come on camera with her? Hmm. Is it maybe he's getting the feeling like this is really getting bad? He doesn't want to be associated with it. Well, too long, too late, Salah. Your face is out there. You are associated with Chantal forever. I hope you know that. Uh, Hazelnut says, we get it, Chantal. You can't stop eating. Don't you get it? We care. Yes, you care. But unfortunately, she doesn't. Y'all need to learn that. She doesn't care. If she cared, she would truly try. She would go to therapy. She would go to inpatient, outpatient. She talked to a counselor. There are online resources for her problems. She's not trying. All the story time that she tells you guys, does she tell you about things that are going on right now to help her? Nope. Nope. And you know what? You're not going to hear it. Understand that you are watching and sub to a person who honestly doesn't care. They don't care, but they expect all of you to care and to be anxious and nervous and just scared for her benefit. You know, if she's got to care first. It's got to start there first. If she doesn't care, what can anybody else do? Honestly, what can anybody on the internet do for her? Yeah, another person suggesting weight loss surgery. Nope, nope. No, 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 no weight loss surgery, no WLS, not until she gets her issue with food under control. Nope, no doctor would give it to her and they shouldn't because all she would do is make herself sick or put her life at risk because she would bust open her stomach with the bee monster out of control. Nope, nope. Let's see. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Shelly says this was seriously just sad to watch. Uh, go to a doctor, come up with a plan so you're not failing daily because you don't know what you're doing. No, she doesn't know what she's doing. If she knew what she was doing, she wouldn't be so sick or unhealthy or losing her mobility. You know, what she says and how she is are two different things. And if you think it's sad now, I mean, wait, it might actually get worse. So you got to make a decision sometime. Do I want to stick around and, and watch it get worse or don't I? I mean, it's it's up to you. Those of you on YouTube, like you decide what you want to watch. Ah, here's something. Farmhouse says, like I said last time, you posted one of these videos. You will never have a chance tackling this over there in Kuwait. You have no insurance there, no resources, and don't even speak the language. You're clearly miserable, which is why you'll never be able to abstain from overeating. At least back in Canada, you'll have access to regular doctor care and primary care, but knowing you, you'll wait until something really bad happens. What are you going to do if you have a stroke over there or need amputation and they won't do it because you'll need to pay out of pocket? I don't know how the anxiety doesn't cripple you. Go home and get better, Chantal. Everybody's saying that in the comments. Go home. Do what you need to do. Take care of yourself. That's what her subs that care for her want for her. But again, she doesn't care for herself. 
So those that care for her feel powerless. I mean, it's, it's got to start with her. It's got to. Got to. She doesn't care. How can anybody else help? Uh, Hello Darkness says, this is the point of no return. She lives online and doesn't want to get out and accept the truth. Actively going to the doctor and therapist implies dealing with all the BS she has accumulated over the years, and she is just too afraid to do that. At this point, viewers should just ignore her, so she's forced to seek attention elsewhere and actually put in some work. Well, look, I'm not one to tell YouTube what to do, but they did make some policies not too long ago saying that she couldn't do this kind of content. Wouldn't it be something that they actually reinforce them and she couldn't be get paid or compensated to hurt herself anymore? Wouldn't that just be something? Maybe that might make a difference. I'm just saying, YouTube, I'm just saying, I'm just saying you could make a difference here, but you're not. Uh, Zoe says, is this some kind of weird twisted joke? I swear you get off on this BS. You literally have no shame. Nope, no shame. Again, all she's thinking about is engagement, comments, super chats, uh, membership signups, views, making the money. That's all she cares about. At this point, Chantal, money is secondary. You should really be putting your health first because if you get your health first, you can always make more money later. But if you have no health, you won't be able to make it. So there's like all these different comments. I could just keep going and keep going and keep going. Like for real, we already are almost like half an hour in. Sorry about that. There was just a lot of comments and I want to catch them before she gets rid of them. So how about we, we just switch over to uh, the video and watch that and I'll give my comments. Let's get going, y'all. Let's go. To overcome. Oh, oops. Special shout out. Oh, no, not the scammy. Old. Let me get past that. <laughs> Sorry. To overcome. I feel like defeated. Hi guys, salam alaikum. Welcome back to another video. So today I have something that will make you judge me hardcore. And that's exactly why she's doing it. She's doing it for the engagement. Salah must have told her you cannot get on camera and rage. That's a big no-no. Like no raging, but... If you want to find other things to get people riled up and get people talking, go ahead. Like there are certain things that are a no and other things are a yes. And so she's just poking at people and manipulating people and manipulating people through negative emotion to watch her videos and to comment on her videos so she can get that engagement. She wants people to judge her. She wants the reactions channels talking about her she wants people in her comments to get upset that's what she's looking for but before you do i have a lot of stuff to um share with you guys i have cat hair all over my face i was kissing my cat to death and it's all over me now so what i'm gonna have today what i'm eating right now is substop and um, six inch sub of different kinds with some chips. I'm going to start with one sub. It's not even a backup sandwich now. It's, it's a sandwich in full view. Th I I'm getting flashbacks of a different kind, y'all. I remember all the way back when Chantal, when she was in Canada, she loved to go to Starbucks. She was a Starbucks kind of gal. And she would go to Starbucks and she started out getting one tall venti drink. Just one. Mm -hmm. And then she graduated to getting two at a time. <laughs> she decided to double up on them Starbucks. Just double fisting those drinks. Getting those liquid sugar and calories. And here we are. Here we are. Can't just have one sandwich. Gotta have two because, you know, why not? Keep this there, sandwich. One chip should be enough. For now One chip should be enough. You can take the other bag of chips and give them to Salah or throw them in the trash or put them outside the house somewhere 
if they're in the house, we know what's going to happen. Now we'll see some pomegranate juice. So I know you're thinking, Fruity Beauty. Diabetes says, who with that pomegranate juice? Fruity, you have high blood sugars. What are you doing? You know, eating bad things for you. So what I've discovered is, and what I want to share with you, I don't want to share just the good times, Bismillah with you. I want to share when I'm struggling also. There's no struggle. You're not fighting against anything right now. You're not fighting. You come, you can, you've come on camera and you made a big deal about diabetes. You want everybody to know about it. You want everybody to be concerned about it. You came on camera showing your monitors with extremely high blood sugar readings. Now here you are drinking a very tall glass of sugar water. On top of that, the bread, carbs, turn into what? Sugar. So you are carb loading, you're sugar loading. I'm sure that's gonna make your blood sugar spike. So where's the struggle? What exactly are you fighting against? I don't see you fighting. I think you've surrendered in the wrong way. And clearly I'm struggling getting rid of food that's been comforting me for years. Um, so let me get into that. And you know what? You know what? Who brought her this food? Was this delivery? Or did Salah bring this to her? Because we know that she didn't go out and get that herself. So if you were really fighting against your problem with food, Chantal, you would delete all of your food apps that way would it wouldn't be so easy to get a hold of food and if salah gave a crap he wouldn't be bringing you all this fast food hmm. because it turns out having any kind of health issues doesn't seem to be enough sometimes to keep me from eating bad things. So what will? I mean, seriously, how bad does it have to get? Do you have to have a heart attack, a stroke, lose a limb, lose a finger? I mean, what exactly has to happen before you get it? That you've, you're going too far and you've gone too far. What has to happen, Chantal? Do you have to have a stroke and, and have half your body paralyzed for life? And you have to relearn doing certain things? Again, I'm not wishing this upon you. I'm asking a question. How bad does it have to be? I know you are a person of extremes. So what extreme, bad, scary thing, what scared straight moment has to happen before you wake up? to the fact that you can't treat your body this way, that it can't put up with all of this. What has to happen? You know, I'm looking at you and the way you are on YouTube, I, I, I'm just sharing my thoughts, y'all. As I said earlier, I think if Chantal did lose a finger or a toe or a leg, she would use that as a way to garner sympathy from the audience rather than that moment be a wake-up call she would look at that as content and turn that into a money-making thing versus a wake up and open your eyes kind of thing um i realized that you know i'm going to the doctor after and i need to get on medication you know like everyone was saying until i can I'm, I'm new here. I'm learning the healthcare system. I'm trying to find, I'm going to be trying to find help for my eating issues and stuff like that as well. Um, so I'll keep you guys posted with that. You know, if she goes to the doctor, they're going to tell her the same thing she's heard before. They're going to say, you need to get a hold on your problem with food. You need to cut down your portions. You need to eat healthy food. You need to cut out the fast food. You certainly need to cut down on the sugar. She's already, she knows what to do. She just doesn't want to freaking do it. And medication is not going to fix it all.
okay it's it's a combination of things working together to fix the problem not just one thing that can be a quick fix there's no magic wand chantal to fix your issues you've, you've got far too many far too many but this is a six inch chicken teriyaki parmesan oregano bread lettuce tomato mayo a sweet, a sweet onion sauce southwest sauce jalapeno um, jalapenos black olives So I'm not trolling with this video. Yes, you are. I'm just actually being very transparent. I'm showing how I struggle to stay on track. Ma'am, anybody who says they have a problem with food, anybody who's a carb addict, that you have your husband go out and buy a crap ton of chocolate and seven bottles of fruit juice, you are not struggling. You're not trying to fight it off. You're giving into it. Don't talk to me about that. Most times. I'm having trouble like being able to be consistent with eating super clean. I feel like starving. But you're not starving. Starving implies you've gone days and days without a morsel of food. You post videos every day. Clearly, you're not starving. Clearly. If you're 550 pounds and gaining, clearly you're not starving. I don't think you have to worry about that, foodie. And like not satisfied because... That food, clean food is obviously not, um, doesn't satisfy anything. Here's something for you, foodie. Since you're concerned about starvation, consider this. When you eat junk food that has no nutritional value whatsoever, it is the same as taking a bag of garbage and throwing it down your throat and it ends up in your stomach. So when your digestive system tries to digest that garbage and there's no nutrition, there's no vitamins, there's no minerals, there's no nothing. You know what the body says to you? It says, well, um, thanks for the bag of nothing, but we got nothing out of that. So yeah, we're still hungry because you did not eat the right things. So maybe you might experience feelings of hunger because of that. You put yourself on that toxic hamster wheel of garbage, garbage, garbage down your throat. There's no nutrition. On the inside, your body is lacking what it needs. And so it's sending up signals to give it what it needs. But because you avoid healthy food so much, you're constantly hungry. Between that and the bee monster, yeah, you're going to be hungry. So it is possible to be 550 pounds and at the same time be in a way, starving because you're eating nothing but processed garbage with no nutrition. Stuff for health, which is it should be. So I need to learn how to cope and I can't right now. Why not? Why not? I need to learn how to cope, but I can't right now. Why not? What's stopping you? It's not like you have a regular job and you have to go to work. It's not like you have anything else to do. Why can't you learn how to cope? Why not? Why can't you learn how to have different coping mechanisms and skills? What's stopping you? This I got here. Tell me. You, you, there's different ways to cope with the bee monster to tell it to shut up. I know I had a deal. I corrected my relationship to food. You know how I did it, foodie? I took all the emotional anchors off of food. 
because I was giving food too many hats to wear, turning to it for, for comfort, for negative emotion, as a throwback to happier times in my life, just you got to take those anchors off and you got to get to the heart of the problem and deal with the problem for the problem to not be a problem anymore. And here's something else that would help you. If you start to have those urges where like you're starting to feel negative and you're, you're, you're just angry, go take a walk or go just take your focus off of food, but you just won't, you won't. But this garbage of, I got to learn how to cope, but I can't right now. Why not? That's a cop out for no reason. Am I fine since having high blood sugar? I'm so ravenous all the time. Yeah, well, if you're a diabetic and you've got high blood sugar, it also makes you excessively thirsty. I know that from talking to a friend like you are just incredibly thirsty all the time. So I don't know about, I'm not a doctor. Uh, anybody in my comments that you are familiar with diabetes, uh, question, is the reason why she's always hungry? Could it be related to her blood sugar and her body is just trying to balance out the high blood sugar by uh, just, just trying to lower it down by maybe the eating? I don't know. Y'all let me know in the comments. Hi. Anyway. I know there are certain things you can eat that help to regulate blood sugar so there's no spikes. I think protein is one of the things you can eat. But maybe that might be the body's way of trying to cope when she drinks like the sugary drinks and all that. You said they're talking about her health, drinking a tall glass of juice. Classic, iconic. My obsession with food. Perfect. She's like, my obsession with food. And then stuffs her face full of food. Yes, yeah, she is obsessed with food. And the funny, not funny part of that is Chantal has always wanted to be married. At the same time, she's been married for years to food. Honestly, like, like that's, she's faithful to food. Absolutely. The chunks of chicken here are so huge. <laughs> Finish your sentence. Um, Don't divert. It has been going on since I'm a child. Mm hmm From a very young age, McDonald's is like ingrained. <laughs> the Happy Meal, the toys. I, when I was a kid, the toys was Fraggle Rock. You know, I'm a, I know what she's about to do here. She's about to tell a story where she says, like, her obsession with food goes back to her childhood. So she's implying that her upbringing and her family are to blame here's the thing though a lot of young people when they're children they went to mcdonald's and they ate happy meals but they did not turn into raging food addicts later on in life chantal did so she's trying to blame mcdonald's and she's going to try to blame her family you know on a devil's whim just to play devil's advocate Let's just say Chantal did have a childhood where 
it was ingrained in her. It was pressed upon her that food was love. Let's just say that happened. That was when she was a child. But how old is she now? She's nearly 40 years old. Like when you leave your parents' house and you get out on your own, you are free to improve yourself in whatever way you want. So if you've known for years you had issues with food, then as an adult, you can untangle that messy web and clean it up, right? Right. But you never did. You never did. Now, here you are on YouTube, monetizing your problem and blaming your family, although they haven't been around you in a long time, have they? You're not close to your family. So how can you blame them for what's going on now? But for a long time, my mom was a single mom and she always, she had to work or, you know, go to school. She was young. And by the way, Chantal, this video, this little pity, poor me, confessional type video, the things you're saying in this video, it sounds like these are things that need to be said in a therapy session you really should be saying this stuff to a therapist because then a therapist could help you for real getting on youtube and talking about it with just an audience that's not going to really do anything you care to make money off of your past but you don't care enough to fix the hurt in your past so no you're getting no sympathy from me all you care about is exploiting the things that are wrong with you, but not healing any of them. And I had to be left with a lot with my grandmother on my dad's side. My oh, she's just going for broke. She's blaming everybody in her doggone family. It's mom's fault. It's grandma's fault. It's everybody to blame in her family for this. And parents on my dad's side are both dead. My grandfather on my dad's side was morbidly obese I remember being a kid and being shocked at seeing him with his shirt off at how large he was he died of a stroke in his 70s so you had a grandfather that he was obese you saw him the way he looked. You saw his lack of health. He died of a stroke. And that doesn't give you a moment to pause and think about what you're doing to yourself now and how, how you could end up. And then my grandmother, heavy smoker. I remember she would always just be at the table cooking something, cracking open a Diet Coke and lighting a cigarette every few minutes, like every, you know, few minutes or so. She used to have me go in her closet and grab her a pack from her carton. <laughs> Players light. was the brand. I never liked going in that room. Her room was dark and cold. And felt haunted. And it didn't help that once she told me when her husband, my grandfather, passed away that she saw him in that room. That's the house with the ghost in the basement. Anyway.
Is there a point to this story? I look forward to going because I knew I would be eating good. <laughs> so you saw relatives that one was super or morbidly obese and he unfortunately passed away from a stroke. You saw it. Basically, you had people around you that had different issues. And when you were young, you liked to go over there because you knew you could just go to town on the food and it would be allowed. Twisted. I was spoiled. Spoiled and enabled. And not much has changed. Because in her time on YouTube, that's what she seeks out. She seeks out people who will sympathize with her and enable her. Everything we're looking at right now is a culmination of different things that are enabling her. YouTube, they could shut her down. They said they would. They said this kind of content is a no-no, but they haven't. So she continues to get paid uh, on views and super chats and memberships from them. And yes, there are people that are her subs that they want the best for her and they don't want her to jump off the mortal coil. But there are people in her audience that they're there for the food fetish and they encourage her to eat. So there are different things enabling her, even Salah. Salah is an enable her. He, he enables Chantal. So you, basically you got different layers of different things enabling this woman. It's all a toxic system to keep the issues going rather than break them down and make them stop. So she would make me comforting meals. And snacks. So comforting and memorable so it's you know i'm not a psychologist i'm not a therapist i'm not here to diagnose you chantal it sounds like you associate food with love like you associate the two of them too close together and i have a bit of experience with that because <laughs> i have a large family large southern family as a matter of fact i make a joke of it i don't have a family tree i have an orchard you feel me <laughs> like half the state of kentucky tennessee and georgia are all related to me one way or the other <laughs> it's just a big ass family <laughs> but in my family food they, they they kept you well fed our idea of portion control of my family is you can't put any more food on the plate okay and you come back for seconds and thirds that's just how it was but it sounds like you associate food with love and you can't do that because food is food it's just stuff you put in your body to give you energy to go outside and do stuff that's its only job it ain't supposed to do anything else okay that's where you're messing up and grain in my memory that I still dream about being there. This is during a time in my childhood where my dad was more involved. You know, she talks a lot about her childhood, doesn't she not? She talks a lot about her childhood and, and she, we call her a big giant toddler because that's exactly how she behaves. She talks about her childhood. She acts like a toddler. She even sounds like a toddler when she talks sometimes. She uses that little baby voice. What is this obsession with your childhood, Chantal? Is there some part of you on the inside that you want to go back? to your childhood and start over. Like, what is that? Let me tell you something. You're almost 40 years old. There is no time machine to send you back to your childhood. 
There is just absolutely none. So if that is the wish of your heart, just give it up. You cannot regress. You can't go back in time. You can't reverse time. So maybe stop acting like a child and, and put away childish things and, and be a grown, mature person. So, yeah, sometimes in my dreams, you know, even my food obsession follows me in my dreams. I have dreams of being back at my grandmother's house. She used to make these tiny little sweet and sour meatballs. You know, her here she is trying to sound human, talking about her grandmother, grandmother Siro, who passed away, who's no longer here. Talking nostalgically about Grandma Siro. The thing is, when Grandma Soro was alive and Chantal had ample opportunity to spend time with her and talk to her, she didn't. All she cared about was spending time with Natter. She barely saw her grandmother. Now that Grandma's gone, now she's trying to act like she cared so much about her grandma. She would give me these little chicken nuggets with Diana's barbecue sauce. It was so good. Magic moments, butterscotch or vanilla pudding. She would take a fresh loaf of bread, cut thick slices, and put thick slices of fresh, like St. Albert's cheese. If you're from Ontario, you know. You know, you could truly tell that she's had a very sad, lonely life by the fact that all of her happiest memories revolve around food. She doesn't talk about any other happier times, being around people, doing things. It's all about the doggone food. There's a lot of people that ask the question, why won't she give up the food? I can answer that for you. If you have a person and they have one single thing in their life that they look forward to, just one single solitary thing that just gives them joy and they have nothing else. And you say, you have to go without that one thing. You have to get rid of it. That means they have nothing else in life to make them happy. Now, Chantal, she's got many different issues, right? She depends on food for everything to make her happy, to soothe her when she's angry or sad or depressed or upset. Food is wearing entirely too many hats with her. In order for her to get away from food, her huge task is that she's going to have to find something that makes her equally as happy. If food is up here, she's going to have to find a thing or collection of things that's also up here so she can let food go. That's going to be huge for her because she's not focused on anything else. She's not thinking of anything else, but that's what would have to happen. If you are looking at a negative thing as a source of happiness and you want to get rid of it, You've got to find something else to replace it. Nature abhors a vacuum. She's not even trying to find a replacement. Not even trying. I say an Albert's cheese. And put it under the broiler. And I can still see her leaning over the oven to keep an eye with a dart in her hand. <laughs> But she used to get mad at me for asking for extra pudding. Excuse me. Even back then, she would tell my mom, you know, 
I think Chantal has a problem with food. She. So even your family knew from a young age there was an issue. And nobody stepped up to the plate to fix it. Wouldn't keep asking for snacks. So the history goes way back. Remember my first bag of chips, how it made me feel. Well, big question, how does the bag of chips make you feel now? And I say that on a serious note. How does it make you feel now? Do you get the same amount of happiness? Because I don't think you do. I think that endorphin rush that you were getting with food, it stopped a while ago. Now you're just eating to eat. You're eating so that you don't go into a panic. Like the high just stopped coming, but you're scared about what you'll feel and how your body will react if... You don't give in to your urges. Okay, so this is the second sandwich. It's the meat feast with pickles, olive, uh, with pickles, black olives, lettuce, tomato. Chantal, why are you eating that second sandwich? I mean, are you trying to prove something? Like what exactly are you trying to prove that how much food you can stuff down your throat? Because it's not it's not cute. It really isn't cute. You ate the first sandwich. Why don't you just stop there? Like nobody is in your comments saying, I bet you can't eat two of those. There's no need to eat this much. It's impressing no one. No. Nope. Extra mayo, salt, pepper, and oil and vinegar on Parmesan oregano. It's kind of like their version of um... and another bag of chips. Can I tell y'all something? I really don't want to see her eat. If she doesn't have anything worthwhile to say, I'm going to cut it off here. Because I can't stand her little jaw clicking. The fact that she stuffs her mouth so much so you can actually hear that jaw click. Oh, I can't stand it. It's just so obnoxious. But this franchise is like not affiliated with Subway. Who cares? Go away. So, <clears throat> they put so much pickles. Mm. Um, Just to show you how far back. This obsession with food goes. So Chantal gets on YouTube and she says, I should be allowed to do these videos. I'm just doing a mukbang. But in this video, she's saying she has an obsession with food. So how can somebody who has an obsession with food, who's got a clear, excessive, extreme problem with food, get on YouTube and do videos like this safely, where they're not harming themselves or their health? 
worse, not only is Chantal hurting herself, but by doing videos like this, she might be triggering people that have BED or there's also this potential also anybody who might be getting on YouTube they're you know they're thinking what can I do to make a successful channel they might see the size of her channel and say I want a channel that big and they see her eating and they think well that looks easy can I just say to anyone having that thought don't do this She's traded 100% of her health for a paycheck. She's 550 pounds. She's morbidly, morbidly obese. She has trouble with her mobility. She's got all kinds of health problems. Trust me, a paycheck just isn't worth it. Always choose health as your greatest wealth. Don't follow in this woman's footsteps because she can even barely walk. I feel like it's impossible to overcome. I feel like defeated. You can't be defeated in something if you've never tried to fight. I had BED. I was stuck on that roller coaster, Chantal. I made it off because I wanted to. Because I didn't want to get stuck on it forever. I found my way off of it. Now I have different coping mechanisms, different coping skills. You don't want off that roller coaster. You want to be able to continue as you are, keep the drama, keep the engagement, keep the views, keep the subs, make the money, monetize your pain. There's no struggle. You're not struggling. You're not fighting against it. There's no defeat. You never started the fight to begin with. All of this crap is just her coming online and saying to her subs, oh, I just can't do it. I'm so helpless. Pity poor me. Okay, let me paint a picture for you guys for what's going on with Foodie. Just, just follow me. What she's doing right now, do you know the picture I'm getting in my head? The picture I'm getting in my head is somebody who's in the ocean and they're splashing around the water saying, help me, I'm drowning, I'm drowning. I'm going to drown. And there are people on a big boat next to that person saying, hold on, we'll toss you down a life raft and a life preserver. And that person saying back to those people, oh, don't bother, I'm fine. <laughs> you know, there are people next to her wanting to help her. There are resources that want to help her. There's resources and, and help available. She truly doesn't want it. She just wants to make a spectacle of herself and her life and get attention using both. That's what's going on. If she wanted the help, she could get the help in all kinds of ways she could, but she would have to commit to the help and get serious about it and stop screwing off with it. That's the best way I can describe it. So. So basically what you're saying, Chantal, is you give up. You're basically have said in, in so many words, I give up. Uh, I've tried. It's hopeless. I've tried to fight against this. So basically you're saying I completely give up and I give in and I'm going to give in to food. That's the message here. That That's the ambiance of your channel. I'm going to continue to eat until something happens to me because I am not going to try to take a different route to life. I'm looking for the path of death.
So I have one request, Chantal. Listen, if you're going to sit there and eat this way, can you please go off YouTube and do it? Nobody needs to see this. Nobody. Not your subs, not no one. Take this crap offline if you're going to do it. Have some respect for people that have BED or any ED so you're not triggering them. If you're going to do this, do it quietly off camera. Because it's not, this is not even a mukbang. This is her sitting there stuffing herself stupid and making everybody watch. And again, I'm, I'm saying it because it needs to be said. She is an addict doing her addiction in full view of the public because she wants everybody to watch her do her addiction because if you're watching, she gets paid for you watching. She's looking to get paid to hurt herself. And if YouTube wanted to put their foot down on all of this, they could, but they're not going to. They're just not because they're making their money too. But they could pull the plug on all this crap if they wanted to. Or. Good girl. Scratching her post. Strolling along, strolling along a street. At night with like tons, each lot, each row of the street on either side is lined with well-lit restaurants. This sounds like she's doing like talking about her dreams. Can I listen? It's been a long day of Chantal. <laughs> We've got just like five minutes left, but she's boring the crap out of me. I've been doing reacts all day. Is it okay if I just cut it off here? I think it's okay. I think we got enough. So I think I will. But I love y'all. Hope you guys enjoyed this react video. If you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Tell me what you guys think. We'd love to hear from you. All right, guys, everybody take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye now.